How do you spell shillelagh? Of course, there's the ever popular, is this security I find in the attic worth anything? So I like the weird questions. Which three presidents had goats as pets? If they're ill, they want to know uh, about their illnesses. What types of medicine would you pack with you if you were going on a trip to Mars? The Carnegie Library of Pittsburgh System is a place where you can get answers to all kinds of questions. In fact, for many people, the library is about more than just books. I visit library just for the internet because uh, my parents live in Russia and I want to communicate some, just, just to talk to them. For my senior project for last year, I had created a coloring book to increase children's motor skills and did more research and study on the computer. Some kids are working on genealogy. They want to know who their people are, where they came from. A lady came in two weeks ago and she thanked us. She just thanked the entire staff for helping her as she was tweaking her resume and her cover letter. She got a job. She was thrilled. What was the last book you read that you liked? The Three Little Pigs. Oh, you like The Three Little Pigs? I can show you some fairy tales. Sound good? People trust the Carnegie Library of Pittsburgh and its librarians will always be there to help them, whatever their needs. We have a major small business collection, uh, and we also help people write business plans, and they go everywhere from dog grooming to gutter installation to you name it. Andrew Carnegie had a vision, a wonderful vision of bringing books and information to everyone, he imagined a huge collection of books that would be shared and appreciated by a whole community. More than 110 years later, Carnegie Library of Pittsburgh is still true to Carnegie's dream of the neighborhood library, like this branch in Brookline. Brookline is a very active and involved community and with the refurbishment of the library, we're just able to offer so much more. It was a much smaller space before. We have a lot of families, so we're able to serve them better now. The new space has something for everybody. And what do little frogs say? Ribbit, 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 ribbit. He feels like the king here. The beanbag chairs are excellent. It's just a world of difference, it's, and it's beautiful down here. It's much, much nicer. It, it's a fabulous space. The bookshelves are at their level. They can walk over to the bookshelves, grab a book for themselves, sit down and read. Each of the neighborhood libraries is intimately connected with the people and the community it serves. This is very definitely a neighborhood library. Um, one of the things that I think is really neat after the renovation, the community came back to the library in droves. Our circulation has gone through the roof. The Homewood branch of the Carnegie Library opened on March 10, 1911. And while libraries are being updated, there is still a reverence for the history they embody, even as they add modern technologies. We get kids doing research on colleges, and if people don't have computers in their home, they're relying on us to have computer access. I get a lot of satisfaction giving kids their first library cards because that's such a big deal for them. One mother brought her son in to get his library card, and she gave him a wallet to put his card in, so he was really impressed. Andrew Carnegie provided seed money to build the libraries, but did not endow their ongoing operations. He expected each community to support financially such a valuable institution. The Libraries for Life campaign now seeks to raise $55 million to continue Carnegie's vision. Like anything, whether it's our business, whether it's the Steelworkers Union or any other enterprise, you need to invest, you need to keep your facilities and operations modern, vibrant, attuned to what the current marketplace uh, requires. That's precisely what Carnegie Libraries of Pittsburgh are doing with this campaign. When you have 10, 15, 20, 30, 40,000 people a month using the library, 2 million people a year, uh, you have to understand that that's helping to create strong roots in this community. Renovations are underway, and some branch renovations are complete, but there is lots more to be done. We had to close two afternoons the first week of August when it was very hot. We need air conditioning, um, an elevator, 
We have our uh, meeting room in the lower level, the library, but there have been meetings that were canceled because some of the attendees were in wheelchairs or on crutches. I know a library means different things to every person who walks through the door, but to a community, a place where information comes, where community people come, where activities can occur, where thoughts can be made much clearer, is exactly what a community library is supposed to do. It's pretty fun to be at the library because it's quiet enough so I can do my homework and other things. I know a lot of people here and you know they help me out with things. The Hill District is about culture. It's about music and literature, August Wilson. It's about songs and saxophones and honking horns and people talking and all of that kind of stuff can happen in a library and it happens here. Well, Pittsburgh is an extraordinarily vibrant fabric of different communities, different elements, different neighborhoods, different nationality backgrounds. The libraries are a part of that. The libraries are situated in each of the individual neighborhoods, drawing from the local community for meetings, for learning, for younger people to meet, for older people to meet, for business owners to use the resources to improve their position. It's doing exactly what Carnegie intended it to do. The library is a central community anchor, and so giving to the library enables you to make our neighborhoods stronger, our communities stronger. The library is the most visited regional asset in the area. So in a town that loves its sports teams, it also loves its libraries. And so libraries have become really central anchors in each of our communities. Andrew Carnegie gave the city of Pittsburgh an irreplaceable gift a library system that is not simply about books. It's about people and the communities in which we live. If you care about the community, if you care about our people, if we care about our employees and about their families, then we care about the libraries. For us to have a chance of keeping them alive, to renovating them, to modernize them, and to give them a chance for the next generation, to me is tremendously important to the historical legacy of Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh is still uh, one of the greatest places in the country to live. And uh, this library system helps it make it that way. Libraries are important because everything that you do in your life requires information. In addition to having lots of books and lots of computers and lots of things to do there, we're that place where information comes and can get messed with and then help people deal with what's going on in their lives. You know, you make readers forever if you introduce children to the library. It's just the idea that libraries do change lives, and I see it every day.